Okay, let's explore right side panel and see what kind of options we have it and how this panel can optimize our workflow and help us to build better scenes. First off, you notice right in our actor wardrobe and props action or workflow tab, we have all models and it's obviously benefits of using new systems because we can reference and uh, link all items related to specific props, actors, scenery, or other things, we still have a legacy support for the content library. And main reason, because we may want to import or create new directory with older content that we want to access or content like Poser Pro. You can also, or you can easy create by right click and select add base directory where you can reference to directory. So example right here, I have my poser format and you can see navigating. So we can go to um, poser pro content and you can see figuring and go access this way. But it is a little bit harder to access so I can I need to know precisely what I'm looking for and accessing. And obviously with new ones, it's kind of a little bit easier and faster access. However, notice not all content will are available in content manager because it's look for DAS format files and some of this is a poser only so you can see it is, they won't be showing and it's reason why we still need this kind of legacy support just to access those files that may does not have it and it doesn't just poser only okay beside the content browser we also have it full object and hierarchy tree for our scenery so let's go ahead inside the uh, uh, scenery and we'll just preload it one the file set in this case it doesn't really matter what you're going to preload we just need one of them and you notice as I preload the objects inside now in our object properties or a scenery properties we start have all the object displaying so we can select directly and access properties inside if we need it so this way you can browse very easy and fast through all objects as well a tree hierarchy it'll display as well here so let's go ahead on smart content we'll just need to go deselect and this is actually one of the proper kind of option you remember sometimes you maybe select one and you like um that cannot find what items it's most likely because yours object is selected it easy recognize also selectable object because we have these bounding boxes around object it's showing the object selected as well in many cases you will see this colorful gizmo pop up on the middle of that okay so let's uncheck we have it multiple items displayed so for example next i want to go and select uh, can be people let's go to the props and i want to put this table with a set nice things about that it's allowed you also place where you want it for example let me go zoom out on this one scenery. So right here I have it some set and I want to put table in the middle. So I'll just click table. I'll drag this table and you can hold it Alt key. And when you hold Alt key or options, you'll notice we have this circle appear on the ground. Circle, it display placement for our object. So for example, if I press here and release it, it will update it all this time tablecloth and you see now we place it elements directly to that area again this is as example just tablecloth so we don't need this i'm going to delete it but same way you can go select single object and just place it in the area where you want it by hold down alt or option key drag and place it Overall, does Studio support a very good drag and drop um, techniques as example? So let's go ahead to, we don't need this one. We'll go to the people. Okay, let's go to um, stylize, we'll do male, female. Okay, actually, let's go to male actor. So I'll just go, let's load it Genesis. Okay, also you notice if we're selecting, we can preview all elements that can be used. 
Okay, let's go ahead and find some element, like for example, short. You can see I take a short drag, highlight the male, and just load it. And it will load it directly on my model. So in this way, drag and drop elements and work very well. Uh, in many cases, if you actually do not select a model and you update it, it maybe does not link directly to the model. By dragging and dropping directly on the model will link that proper to the parenting. So in some cases, drag and drop operation, it's quite a bit useful and can be um, useful to avoid the extra click strokes. Right here, let's go back to our right panel and you'll notice in a scene right now, we have it actually tree created for our Genesis model. It's a parent-child tree. And the more you have a different models related this way, the more you will see this kind of relations established. So right here, by going to our browser, component browser, object browser in our scenery, we can select any specific part if we need it. Okay, manipulate with this. As well, if we're going inside the shaping, you can notice right here, it's help us to identify items as well. Okay, this is a scenery browser. Next, let's look on parameters. And only you notice we have it in many cases similar parameters if we go select it on some um, properties like our models. In this way, we don't need necessary switch between. We can still go into presets or do some other stuff, but we still access full size of the parameters, same what we did before. Only to specific. Except right here, we have it kind of funny looking on this. On the teeth, another problem. So overall, just help you to access faster proper parameters of the object lights, cameras, and other elements inside the scenery without jumping between different actions. Okay, we also look already on a content library. And uh, if using Poser, you'll probably will access some of the Poser figuring by using this content library. Um, we will look a little bit more in other tutorials on uh, creating and adding additional reference but overall it's very simple as I said before just right click and add runtime directory we also have tool settings options and this will relate to active tool for example right here we have universal gizmo so if we switch to surface selection or the region navigation or spot rendering that tool settings will change that allows us to adjust and manipulate so we can enable a scale right date. On this case, disable, just only translate. On this tool, we cannot allow anything. So you can see we can add and adjust all these properties for our specific tool that related to the current selection. So we kind of overview. And again, it's this application is quite a bit complex. So a lot of stuff we can do. Now I think we're ready to start creating. So in next tutorial, let's go ahead and start create our first scenery. We'll try to utilize as much as possible knowledge that we already kind of learned from previous tutorials.